All right, how's everybody doing out there in Math Magic Land today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and today we're going to take a look at factoring, sum and difference of cubes, and don't forget, we're going to have to take out the GCF sometimes, because that is the always the first rule of factoring. But first, let's look at some cubic patterns. These you should have memorized, especially this first column right here, all of this. That, commit to memory so that you can do these types of problems very, very quickly and easily. Now the second column, the one, the second pair of columns, the one in the middle, these guys give you another kind of pattern to take a look at for other types of cubics that you might see. And the same thing with the third pair of columns. So these two other columns here that I'm highlighting in green, those are just other patterns that you may want to memorize or take a look at. Now to go over those patterns real quickly, let me just go ahead and show you guys this. If you have 1x and you cube that, of course you get 1x cubed. But if you cube 2x, so let me write this out the long way. So 2x, if you cube that, that's the same thing as saying 2x times another 2x times another 2x. So all together, if you multiply the constants together, 2, 2, and 2, that's going to give you 8. And since you have x once, twice, and three times, you're going to get 8x cubed, which is what we have here in this piece. Same thing if you had any other ones. 5x, when you cube that, you'll end up with 125x cubed. Now if you go over to the next column, so let me go ahead and take a look at uh, this guy right here. So you had 3x squared and you're, you're cubing that, you're going to have 3x times 3x times another 3x. So all of that gives you is 3, 9, and 27, and then you have your, oops, I forgot the squared, so x squared, x squared, x squared, so you've got x to the 6th power. So that's how that those cubic patterns work. Now, for this, we're going to have two formulas. And again, most of your teachers will probably tell you to memorize these two formulas. And it's very, very important that you do. All right, so let me go ahead and erase this because we're going to talk a little bit about an acronym known as SOAP. And SOAP is going to be one way to help you remember what, how to, how to apply the formula. And SOAP, the S stands for same. The O stands for opposite. And the A and the P stand for always positive. Now that's going to relate to our formulas here. So if you have A cubed minus B cubed, notice the first piece right here in the parentheses is going to be the same sign. Now the second pair of terms, notice they both start off with A squared, but in the middle, and oops, I made a right O here. This is why copy and pasting sometimes can get to you. So in the middle term, between the a squared and the a b right here in the bottom this should be a plus not a minus so if you have a cubed minus b cubed your factoring pattern is a minus b and then a squared plus a b plus b squared now the a p always positive that's for this term right here both of those are always going to be positive all right your middle term between the two opposite that's going to go here these are both always opposite and of course these two guys here in the beginning are the same. So that's what SOAP stands for. So you're going to have to use that quite a bit when you take a look at these guys. Let's take a look at two examples. Check it. So here we go. We've got our two formulas. We've got some SOAP. And here we go. We're going to wash this problem down. Check it out. Now 32x cubed minus 108. Both of those have a greatest common factor because neither one of those numbers, 32 or 108, is a perfect cube. So I'm going to go ahead and factor something out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a 2. So if I take out a 2, then I'm going to be left with 16x cubed minus 54. Neither one of those are perfect cubes either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out another 2 because both of these guys are even. I can take out an even number again, which is 2. So I'm going to multiply that by this first 2. So 2 times 2 my new number is going to be 4. So I'm going to have 4 times 8x cubed minus 27. Now, both of these terms are cubes here. We've got the 8x cubed minus 27. 
Some people might get that GCF of four right off the bat, but if you don't, just keep going until you get it. Not a biggie. Now, to come up with the values, and this is the way I want you guys to do it. If you set up this little chart right here, you're going to be money. The A term is going to come from this guy right here, this 8x cubed. So you're going to cube root that. And if the cube root of 8 is, of course, 2, and the cube root of x cubed is just going to be x. Now, the B term is going to come from the 27. When you cube root 27, that's just going to give you 3. Now to find a b, that's just a product of the a and the b term that you just determined. So 2x times 3, of course, is just 6x. So you put those pieces together, and then of course you're going to find a squared. So when you have 2x and you square that, that's going to give you 4x squared. b squared, of course, will be 3 squared, which is 9. So we've got all the pieces that we need. Now, all we do simply after that is plug that into our formula. Now the two formulas, what I want to do is look right here at the given problem that has a minus in it. So that means I'm going to start out with 2x minus 3. From there, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the rest of the pieces for the formula. So my a squared term, of course that's my 4x squared. And my ab term is going to be 6x, so it's going to be plus 6x. And then the last term is going to be my b squared, which is plus 9. Now this is the common mistake most people will make right here. Remember in the beginning we ended up factoring out a 4? Make sure you write that 4 in front of the product that you just wrote down. So your final answer, of course, is going to be 4 times the quantity 2 x minus 3 times the quantity 4x squared plus 6x plus 9. Alright, so take your time when you do that. Don't forget, if you do take out a GCF, you've got to put that in the front. Now, let's take a look at our second example. Here for this guy, 2 and 54, we can factor out a 2 from both of those, so that's going to be 2 times 1 plus 27x cubed. All right, pretty straightforward from there. So I think you probably have the pattern. If you think you do, go ahead and hit pause and then fill it out and see how you did. So how did you do with that one? Hopefully, you were able to correctly determine the values of a, b, a, b, as well as a squared and b squared to come up with the final answer of 2 times the quantity 1 plus 3x times the quantity 1 minus 3x plus 9x squared. Now remember, so first piece is always the same middle term is opposite and the last term is always positive so SOAP make sure you follow the rule for SOAP and fill in your formula correctly because your formula is not always going to be right in front of you so do make sure you get that memorized alright that's it for these two examples thank you guys for watching have a wonderful day and I will catch up with you later peace